So I get asked this question all the time. How do I get my private pilot license? Where do I start? How do I become an airline pilot, etc.? I am a flight instructor in Canada, so I'm going to specifically talk in this video about how to get your private pilot license in Canada. In this presentation, I'll cover the four things you need to get your private pilot license, which is your student pilot permit, you have to pass a written exam, you have to pass a flight test with an examiner, this is usually what gives people the most anxiety about getting their license, and then finally, of course, you have to pay a couple fees in order to get your license, and then boom, you're a pilot. So the first place we have to start is, of course, the cars. And no, I'm not talking about a vehicle. I'm talking about the Canadian Aviation Regulations. It's the set of laws that govern aviation in Canada. And you're going to have to get very familiar with these laws if you'd like to become a pilot. Luckily, they are available for free online. And we're going to go and talk about what they say. Specifically, I have to talk about this one law that says if you don't have any kind of airplane license, no glider license, ultralight, whatever, if it's your first license, which is usually your private pilot's pilot license, you have to go to what's called an FTU or a flight training unit, which is a regulated flight school. That's the only way to go and get your private pilot license, unless you are the owner of an aircraft. So if you decide to go buy a plane, you can use any freelancer like myself in order to get licensed. But because of this law, unless you are the owner of an airplane, you have to go to a flight school to get your private pilot license. Now, while buying your own airplane could open a lot of doors for you and actually really benefit your training, it's not something that you want to do unless you have some sort of knowledge in aviation. So while I wouldn't recommend that you go and purchase an aircraft for your, prim for your primary training, it is an option for you if you want to use a freelancer um, and you don't want to go and do your first initial licensing at a flight school. So you don't actually need a student pilot permit in order to commence your training. However, I do recommend to get some of this stuff. There's three things I'm going to talk about out of the way as early as possible. The first thing is the ROC A. This is your written exam for your radio license. It's actually from Industry Canada, not Transport Canada, but it is a multiple choice exam. There are study guides available and you can book with your lo local flight school and get this written exam out of the way. You're also going to need to write what's called the P-STAR. It is your pre-solo test of air regulations. You have to get over 90%. It's a multiple choice exam. There are free study guides available online and you can book this exam with either your local flight school or with a Transport Canada office. So if you can get those two exams done and out of the way, huge advantage to getting started. Another thing that you're going to want to get done is your aviation medical. Now, this has to be done with a specific aviation medical examiner. I'm going to try to post a link below. You can just also Google aviation medical examiner, book with them, and you need to get either a class three, four, or a class one medical in order to complete your training. So when you're done those three things, you basically go to a flight school or anywhere where there's a AP, which is an authorized person. They basically act as Transport Canada and they give you this little piece of paper. That's your student pilot permit. And you have to carry this little permit with you every single time you go in a plane solo. So make sure that you uh, once you get those things, you get this little piece of paper and you hold it very, very dear to you. The next document you're going to want to get your hands on is a Transport Canada document that's called the Flight Training Manual, or as I like to call it, the FTM. This is basically your Bible on how to handle the aircraft. So basically the yoke, the rudder, all of those components and how you're going to be tested is kind of, this book gives you those fundamentals. So um, if you grabbed a copy of this, whether it's digital or paper and read through it, you'll get a really solid under understanding of how your training is going to progress. It works in a linear format so that as you work through the exercises, they get more and more advanced. And therefore, it kind of helps the student progress in, in more or less a linear fashion, even though we layer on the topics repeatedly throughout your training. This is a slide I took from how to prepare for a flight test, and it kind of outlines what you're going to learn from that book that I just showed you. It's a list of exercises that are listed in that book that you go through with your flight instructor during your training to learn all of these things, because then you have to go and you have to demonstrate them on your flight test in order to get your license. And this is where I insert my shameless plug for my channel, which you're watching right now, because my videos are based on this document, the FTM, and my videos walk you through essential knowledge that you'll get out of that document that you will bring to your lessons so that as you go through your flight training, you end up retaining more and spending less money um, because flight training can be a very expensive endeavor. 
Moving along, you might want to grab a copy of From the Ground Up. Is it required reading? No. Is it very good reading? Yeah, it's really good. It basically is another kind of coloring book slash Bible that will get you through so many of the concepts that you're going to need to learn in order to be a good pilot, in order to fly a plane. Uh, it talks about all the fundamental concepts that are found in the private pilot written exam and is almost a substitute slash a bolster for your ground school. And you're going to want to either buy some version of ground school or um, supplement it with things like YouTube, uh, like you're doing right now. Other pilots are great resources, um, online resources, other books. So there's a whole like wealth of knowledge that you're gonna take into your flight training. This is a really good start, um, but it's just one of the many that you'll, you'll probably benefit from during your training. The next very important document you might want to pick up a copy of is the Aeronautical Information Manual or the AIM. It is a Transport Canada publication. It is updated every six months and it is available for free online in PDF. You can get a paper copy, but just be aware that your paper copy will expire in relatively short order um, because this document is updated all the time. But this manual is, again, really great manual, um, essential learning, and you're going to want to have a copy on hand for looking up things that you're going to need to study throughout the course of your training. Um, you don't need to know everything that's in this manual for your private pilot license, um, but it is a start. So you'll want to get yourself a copy of this as well. What is essential to get in paper copy is a copy of all of the paper charts that you're going to need. Now, you we haven't yet gone completely electronic. We're, we're borderline going that way, but NAV Canada produces publications of your paper charts. And this is your VTA, which is your VFR terminal area chart, and your VNC. I know that these words mean nothing to you right now, but basically a paper map is what you're going to need to purchase. Um, depending on where you fly, the terminal area charts, so if you're flying out of a big major city like Vancouver, Calgary, Toronto, um, you have very densely packed airspaces. And so the VTA is like a bigger version um, with more detail if you're going to be flying in those areas, it's going to be mandatory for you. If you're going to be out flying outside of those major zones, the VNC is what you're going to need to have. It's a, basically another version of a paper chart, a paper map. Um, so you can either purchase these at a flight school, your local flight school, or you can just go to NAV Canada's website and buy them directly online and they charge minimal for shipping. Uh, but you're going to need to grab a copy of uh, your paper charts for your local area, and you might also wanna pick up a paper copy of the CFS, not mandatory, but it's always nice to have it on hand. Um, it's basically your phone book of airports so that when you're going to different airports, you have it on hand to look them up. It's up to you. Uh, but that's all publications that are produced through NAV Canada. And since you're going to have to pass the written exam as well as a flight test, Transport Canada, thank goodness, has published guides to help you through this process. So they have the guide for the written exam as well as the guide for the flight test. You have to read both, um, otherwise your flight instructor is gonna lose their mind. And uh, so will the examiner because they expect you to know what's in these guides. Um, so luckily they're available for free and you can just grab these guides, read through them to give yourself an awareness of what it is that you're taking on when you decide to go through your, the private pilot licensing program. Now, this is also really important, but you guys might think I'm joking. Um, one of the best pieces of advice that my first instructor gave me when I was doe-eyed going for my private pilot license is he handed me a copy of the pilot operating handbook and he said, read this cover to cover. And I said, cover to cover, question mark. And he said, yes, cover to cover. Best advice I ever got. At the end of the day, you're not only getting your license, but you're also learning how to operate a machine. And when you go for your flight test, the examiner is going to want to know that you know how to operate that machine in the air where you need to get that thing up and down safely. So make sure that whatever aircraft you choose to fly, whether you, when you're going to the, the flight school or whatever aircraft you choose to buy, make sure that you grab yourself a copy of the operating handbook and know that thing inside and out. It'll uh, really, really help you on your flight test and make the whole process a lot better. And you can't talk about aviation without talking about money. So yeah, you are going to have to have a lot of money in order to get your private pilot license. I would say budget about 15,000 Canadian dollars, more or less. I know a lot of flight schools will try to get you in for 12 grand. Um, usually the students, depending on how they do their uh, training, will end up running over that just because of um, many different reasons that I won't get into now. 
Furthermore, most of that money is actually going towards fuel. So for example, right now in 2022, in order to get a 172 up and down, it's going to cost you about $60 an hour in fuel alone. And that doesn't co that doesn't cover the cost of the oil, the rental of the aircraft, the instructor, none of that. So only in the hourly, it's going to cost you, like I said, 172 is about $60 an hour. That's about ballpark for whatever aircraft you're going to fly. Um, so make sure that you do budget that money and make sure that you have at least $2,000 set aside for the later stages in your training, such as like when you're right about to go for your flight test. Trust me, you're going to want to know that the money is there so that you can finish your training on time when you're ready. The last thing I want to say is take the plunge. Don't think about if you really want to get your license, anyone can do it. Trust me, anyone. I'm an instructor. Anyone can do it. Um, it just takes some people longer, some people less time, and it's going to take a significant amount of your time and your energy if you want to go ahead and get the license. If you decide, you know, eventually after doing it that it's too much for you and you want to push out and you want to pull out, that's totally up to you, but at least you tried. And a lot of people are afraid of getting into the aviation because they're like, oh my God, it's gonna cost me so much money. Most of the time when you look at you know, students who are going through the process and saying that how amazing it is, everyone will always tell you the same thing. Just bite the bullet, go for a lesson, do it. It's super rewarding. I can't encourage it enough. Um, and I would like to support you in any way that I can. So I hope this video really helped. Um, and uh, you can always get in touch with me or just follow along with more of my videos in order to learn more about getting your private pilot license. Cool. Have a great day.